Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. I know it's September and I've had a host code bonus this month, but I'm super close to another sales bonus, but not close enough. I need to stretch a little, so we're getting creative. This is video number one in a series. This is my Santa's workshop series. We're gonna make this cute little pencil box. Got some Christmassy pencils and we are gonna make a treat to hold them. Now, this is just one of the projects that I'll be sending you when you place your $100 order, marissaalvarez.stampinup.net, using the host code for the Santos Workshop series. All right, video number one of the series, let's get started. We're going to use the Sweet Gingerbread Bundle and the Celebrate Tags Bundle to make our project. Got real red cardstock here, and it is three and a half by five and a half. This is our template, super simple and cute. By the way, your Santa's workshop packet will include the pencils and the materials that you need to make this project. We're gonna start with our three and a half by five and a half royal red cardstock and pop that in our Simply Score tool. Thank you. We're gonna put it on the three and a half inch side and score at one half, three quarters, two, two and a quarter, and rotate once to the right. Now we're on the five and a half inch side and we're gonna score at one quarter. Now let's work those scores with the bone folder and trim according to the template. The photo of the template will be in the project sheet. Makes it easier for trimming. The project sheet is available in the link below where it says project details. Click here. That'll take you to the blog. When you're on the blog, you'll see the embedded YouTube video and right underneath there will be a clickable link for the printable project sheet. So when you get your Santa's workshop packet in the mail, you'll be able to print the directions right off and then follow along with the video. All right, we're gonna hold the template so that the bottom left corner is cut out and then our red cardstock in the same way. There's a little tiny rectangle here in the bottom left corner. We're gonna start by cutting that out and I just do a little slight angle cut. This half inch here becomes our glue tab so we can just angle the top. It'll make a cleaner fold. Then we're gonna cut out the score lines across the bottom here from the bottom up to the intersecting score line and liberate those tabs. All right, there we go. Next, we're going to add some texture. Get my Stampin' Cotton Emboss Machine and this Whimsical Trees 3D embossing folder. Let's add some texture to this box before we assemble it. All right, Stampin' Cotton Emboss Machine. We've got number one, our folder. And we're going to watch the orientation of this. We want our trees to be in the right direction when it's all done and nice and straight. So we're going to use the line on the folder here along the edge of our box and then pop this in with the fold first and put four on top of that. And give it a crank. And now look at that fantastic texture. It's going to pair up really cool with our designer series paper. We're using the Sweetest Christmas Designer Series paper. It's four by four and three eighths. And this Designer Series paper um, stamp set color combination is actually going to coordinate with one of the cards in the Christmas card series this year. So you're getting a sneak peek at the Kitchen Table Stamper Christmas Card Stamp a Stack series. There will be a sweet gingerbread stamp a stack that coordinates with this project and each of the projects in the Santa's workshop will coordinate with one of the stamp a stacks. All right, so we've got some glue on that longest tab. I use tear and tape adhesive. We're going to fold and then we're going to fold from the other side at the first score line. So you folding here, not at the glue tab score line, but at the next one. First score line from the other side. You're going to line up your corners top and bottom. And once you've got them lined up along the fold real nicely, then you can take your bone folder here and burnish this adhesive. You don't want to do too much because you'll press the 
design out of the box, but there it is. Now this is the back of the box with the seam running down. I'm gonna fold the tabs in from the sides, from the back to the front, and then we're gonna add some more tear and tape adhesive on this tab. This tab is a skinny quarter inch tab. So if it's a little wide, if your adhesive is a little wide, don't worry, let it hang off the edge a little bit and then fold it over before you close the box. So you can see my tear and tape goes a little bit past the tab. That's okay, I'm just gonna fold it. And then I'll close up the bottom of my box. And now the seams run across the back of the box at the bottom and across the back of the box along the side too. You can use your bone folder here. Just put that into the box and kind of shimmy back and forth to help adhere the bottom of the box. Our designer series paper is just a little bit wider than it is tall and that's the four inch side you want to be your um, vertical measurement. The four and three eighths will be your horizontal measurement and you're going to see when you wrap it up the seams going to go right down the edge on the same side. So your seams are going to run consistent all the way down the back of your box and be very um, slightly, only very slightly noticeable. I've got my cute little pencils here. You'll get a variety of cute little Christmas pencils in your Santa's workshop kit that match the color combination but the designs will vary and we're going to put them in there so that we have some stability for wrapping our paper and then when we wrap our designer shoes paper we're going to start on the back and we're going to start right at that seam so you've got your four inch side and then your four and three eighths inch side you're right up against that fold and then you're going to wrap and when you get to the corner of the box you're going to burnish between your thumb and index finger for that first fold and then same thing just keep on wrapping so you're going to roll around to the front of the box and burnish to make that seam keep going third one using your index finger and your thumb and all the way to the back of the box you'll bring that seam almost entirely to the opposite side. Now you've got soft score lines burnished in there. We're going to take it off of the box for just a minute and use our bone folder and just kind of um, sharpen these folds. So the paper is going to want to fold where you burnished it and just sharpen that up with your bone folder. I find this is the best way to get a nice tight wrap around the box because this piece has to be a little bit wider than the box, a little bit deeper than the box. And so instead of trying to measure sixteenths of an inch, I like to just roll it, kind of burnish the lines as I go. Now we want the seams to run all down the same side of the box, so let's make sure we got the back of our box, which we do. Here's our seam. We're going to line that all up and then add a little bit of tear and tape adhesive i like to do on the front side of the designer series paper here and then on the back side of the designer series paper here when you bring these together you'll get a nice tight wrap with neat seams remove the liner on both sides Snug it up, get it where you want it on your box because it'll be nice and snug. You won't be able to slide too easily. And I want even top and bottom with the red embossed peeking out. And then burnish those down. Now, so cute. Let's do some stamping. Set aside our sample. And I've got my stamp and pierce mat. We're using the sweet gingerbread, which is a photopolymer set and let's see get some ink pads here we're gonna start with soft suede so saffron and crumb cake got some basic white cardstock and my house now we're gonna do the roof with soft suede got the roof One. Then we're going to fill in the windows, and that is with 
So saffron. I love this two-step stamping. Just take your time, line it up, and fill it in. Looks so cute. Then some details on the house. We've got these little curls and swirls. Uh, let's do the window and door first. It makes it easier to line up the curls and swirls in the right place. So a little frame, the door and the window. Again, we're using soft suede over the crumb cake. And then when you add the curls, it'll be perfect placement if you line the bottom of the stamp up with the top of the window outline. And then when you put the roof on, it won't cover your swirls. There's our little house. All right, time to change ink pads now. Slide these out of here. Okay, I've brought in Sweet Sorbet, Real Red, Garden Green, and they've still got my soft suede over here. I'm gonna do our door, Garden Green, and then a tree, this cute little pine tree. And now I've got a gumdrop. We'll do that sweet sorbet. And a heart. We're going to do that real red. So far, everything we've used has come from the sweet gingerbread stamp set. We're going to do our sentiment in soft suede. The sentiment is from the Celebrate with Tags stamp set. We're using the Celebrate with Tags bundle for our tag. So I thought this is a perfect sentiment to bring in. Now we're going to ink this up well, stamp and give it some time to transfer. We want a nice solid Be Jolly banner. All right, now let's go ahead and die cut these images. I think we got everything. I'm gonna get the Stamp and Cut and Emboss Machine all set up for die cutting. All right, let's see if we can win here and do all of this in one pass. I've got my Stamp and Cut and Emboss Machine, one, two, and three plates. All right, if I hadn't misplaced my die for Bee Jelly, we would get all of this cut in one um, pass through the machine. I'm gonna have to fussy cut my bee jolly. I guess if you're gonna misplace a die, that's not a terrible die to misplace. <laughs> I'm going to order another set of the tags dies. They're called um, Celebrations Tag. And um, it's such an awesome, useful die. I'm gonna buy a second set anyways, because look at the great tag that you can get with it. So I'm fully expecting that as soon as I buy the second set of the dies, then the missing die will show up. But in the meantime, let me just run some scissors around my little Be Jolly banner. I guess if you have to fussy cut because you misplaced the die, this is the die to lose. <laughs> now, last bit of die cutting before we assemble. I have the, the tag. This is from that celebrations tags and you see it makes this fold over tag i cut from a scrap a pool party and a basic white tag now we're going to use this awesome snow drift this is from the gingerbread um, sweet gingerbread bundle it's just one of the awesome dies in the gingerbread house dies we're going to use this to cut a hill in our white tag. So let's put aside the pool party one. Grab our stamp and cut and emboss machine one more time. And let's modify our white tag. So what kind of a exaggerated hill? We want something that really shows what we did there. I think that looks pretty good. And you can keep the top of the basic white tag there for uh, stamping or smaller images or greetings or things. So don't throw that away. It's still really good cardstock. And now here we have a hill and a perfectly good basic white scrap. So use that for something else. 
we're going to use our hill and our pool party tag to extend our tag just a little bit and give us a nice horizon line and a background for our house but also we're going to extend it just a little bit make it a little bit longer so that we can um, fit both the gingerbread and the be jolly sentiment so i'll use some liquid glue and put a bit on the top of my hill here and when we put this together we want to make sure that the stitches from the blue tag behind don't show so just pull it down until the stitches are covered and it's going to extend the tag a little bit less than a half an inch i'd say make sure everything stays nice and straight and square and then you can audition that the length of that over your treat if you want to make sure some of your designer series paper still shows top and bottom behind the tag all right i'm pretty happy with my tag there let's get some dimensionals and some liquid glue and get this put together using up the edges of some dimensionals cut them into bits and I'm going to add some on the back of the roof and we'll pop the roof on the house and see how we lined up those swirls just so that the edge of the stamp was on the edge of our window trim now when we add our roof nothing's covered let's go ahead and put the house onto the tag with dimensionals I love um, treats because you can do dimensionals two three four layers high if you want to so we're going to add the house with some dimensionals and then I'm going to put the tag on the treat with some dimensionals also. We're going to put the dimensionals on the treat so that we know that the dimensionals aren't past the edge with exposed adhesive. Before we put the tag, let's do our ribbon. I've got two ribbons here. They are um, real red and this was just a solid narrow ribbon and i've got a sheer ribbon basic white now if you get the santa's workshop kit you're going to get your ribbon included uh, they are retired ribbons but if you use the host code and you get your kit you'll have what you need just wanted to show you what they were in case if you're following along without the kit and you've got those in your stash we're going to do a double bow here so whenever I'm tying a bow, I like to keep the ribbon on the card, like we wrap it on a card for our kits or on the spool so that there's no waste. You're gonna hold the ribbons one on top of the other. And don't you don't need to bother with a knot here. It'll just add bulk. You can just lift up, swoop over the top, tuck into that space that your finger's holding and pull. And that will give you a perfect double bow with the ears up and the tails down to adjust hold the center and then pull the loops to tighten and now we'll cut it off of the spool or in your case when you're following along with your kit it'll be wrapped on a card so we'll cut it away from the card on this side and then we'll trim this side and that's all the waste that we have so just a little ribbon tip there slide that out of there and expose adhesive Add the tag to the treat. So cute. I love it with the green candy cane stripe paper too. Awesome. Your kit will include one of the um, designer series papers that you'll see in the photograph. There's three different possibilities, but you'll get everything that you need to finish your project. Let's see here. I got a bit of dimensional on my scissors. Let's put that on the gumdrop. And then we need a bit of dimensional for the back of our all right let's see here we're gonna add to be jolly it's gonna go past the edge of the tag just a little bit so don't put adhesive all the way to the end it's gonna be a little bit offset just put it right along the stitches there and then gumdrop another layer of dimensionals i think we're up to four now but that's the fun part about treats you can do that we got a little heart for our house get a little bit more dimensional you guessed it we'll add that to the house oh so cute all right and last i've got my 
little pine tree here. And I'm going to run some liquid glue down the bottom half of the tree and just pop it on kind of with a little angle. I think it looks so cute that way. And there it is. <laughs> There's our sweet gingerbread pencil box treat, the first project in the Santa's Workshop series. All right, so if you are holding on to a Stampin' Up! order and you're willing to help me make my goals, use this host code with your $100 or more order, marissaalvarez.stampinup.net, and I will send you a project kit to make all of the Santa's Workshop project series, including the treats. I'll see you in the next video. This is video one of a series. To shop Stampin' Up, Marissa Alvarez .stampin Up net. If you have any questions, email Marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next Santa's Workshop video.